Hi, my name is Matt Carroll with World Class Coaching with the help of Academy Sports Coach 2022. Uh, I want to talk to you about a session that I've designed with the help of a book uh, we have available on the website called Tactical Series, Mauricio Pochettino. Um, really great book. Um, again, compliment if you've ever read um, the the book about Mauricio Pochettino, uh, the, um, it's called A Brave New World, um, different than the other Brave New World. But it's a really a great book into the insight into his, his upbringing and his thought process. Um, and I've always been interested in, in uh, Pochettino because of that, um, despite definitely not being a Tottenham fan at all. Um, but I, I remember when they're very exciting to watch under him, and that's what this book really discusses. Uh, this book by James Lambert, um, his tactical style and things, some of the things that made him successful and, and made him so that every year you're still hearing rumors that he's going back to Tottenham. Um, every time you know there's a manager shift, it's well, is he coming home? Is he coming home? Is he coming home? He's beloved because of the tactics that he was implementing, and his book then breaks those tactics down. Um, so. So what I did was I designed a session basically about uh, some of the things that Mauricio Pochettino likes to do with uh, his wide play and his overlaps and things like that. You know, this is the days of Kane, who's obviously still there, but uh, Dele Alli was fantastic. Bertongan's still there. Um, uh, Kyle Walker before he uh, he traded over for Man City. Um, but some of the interesting things they like to do over there. And one of the things that, uh, you know, it struck me it's in the first couple pages he talks about in uh, James Lambert talks about in his books, the tactical series, um, is – how he likes to get his midfielders to overlap from the inside out to the um, some of his wide players, whether it's a winger or a an, an outside back, wing back, what have you. Um, so what I did was I designed a session where we start with the end in mind. And I like to do this sometimes when I'm trying to get a specific tactical concept across so the players understand, like, this is what it should look like. This is, we're going to walk through it. I'm going to show you exactly what it should look like. And then I'm going to train you through the session, how to get it so we can make this consistently look like this. So I've got it set up here where we start with a, a passing pattern. Player plays, center backs, uh, uh, center back, goalie, whoever we want to be. He's going to play out here to the wide player. Uh, this player is going to make a run where they're going to overlap for um, uh, the wide player. They are then going to dribble forward into a wide area, into an attacking wide area. These players will make runs. We want to release a wide winger uh, to the end of the box here. So that's something that we also discussed in the book is being able to get those two players high. Uh, and we get these players in the box, and we have a pass or a shot, maybe, from that area. We play in the box, and we try, try to create a scoring opportunity from that. Um, and hopefully we're going against Aaron and get some nice finisher, finishes. Um, one other way you can utilize this is instead of having this player, um, uh, what's it called, go just right to go, one of the other uh, passing movements that was discussed was taking um, this player who receives the pass to look to play Kane. I didn't mean to do that one. Play Kane, who would be their nine, um, Harry Kane, uh, as kind of a pivot, a high pivot, Kane gets it, pivots to a late releasing uh, outside back here, a wing back, who's then open to uh, to get involved in the attack. Um, and you know you have Vertonghen back, who's going to clean things up uh, for Tottenham here in this example. So two different ways. Uh, depends what you want to do. You can do both. Um, another thing to think about is how you want to be doing this. Do you want? Hey, here's my starters. I'm going to watch them do 10 reps. Everyone else can watch. Um, do you want to take a little longer, but you want to get everyone to understand what everyone's role is and have everyone just rotate? That's why I like to have the cones here because I'll just have them rotate. Okay, next guy up. After you make the pass, you're the receiver, and we just kind of keep it moving fluid. As soon as the ball's out, next guys go. So we're getting high tempo. We're getting reps in. Um, but the players are able to utilize uh, and see the concepts that we're trying to put in place, but from several different angles. Oh, if I play this ball here, that's a really difficult ball to, play, to deal with. Why do I play that ball from when I'm in that position? Um, so this moves it around a little bit and, and gives them a little bit more of a tactical um, understanding of what we're trying to get across. So um, you can do that as slow as you want. Hey, maybe you walk in. That's your warm-up before you actually start physically warming up the players, definitely because you're going to be using this kind of tactical session for an older age group. They're going to need to stretch. Maybe you walk them through this first. All right, and that way they can kind of talk about it and they're discussing it and, and you know, they have this, something to discuss other than just, you know, whatever happened at school or, or um, you know, work that day. Um, and they're like, hey, I don't understand that. Can you talk to me through that? So it gives them a little chance to kind of break it down by themselves, um, figure those things out, and then you go into your full stretch and then you're just like, all right, that was what we were trying to work on. Let's put it in play. You don't need that goal there. Um, so I'll reset and clear the field. So the first thing I would do is I'd break this down. What I next like to do is really break it down into a um, – 
the basics of what we're trying to accomplish. So the first interaction we need to master, none of this works, is we don't have an overlap. We don't have an overlap. We're just sitting there. Okay, we played a ball to a wide player. And now we're pinned down. So I'm going to move these cones. I'm going to create four grids. I've definitely used this one in other sessions that I've done on here. Um, but I just really enjoy it. I think it's just a high repetition, um, high pace, uh, you know, activity. And it, it really simulates what we're trying to do. Specifically, this, uh, this, um, the square and the through ball activity we're going to add here. So you'll have a guy here, guy here. Oh, nope, not him. Don't need him. Here, the side on player here. And then a guy over here. And then we have corner flags out here, 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 and here. And then we have players. So I'll just do one player now, but there'll be a player at every single cone. So this player passes to this player. When we do the square ball, they play a pass that they're going to take a square ball through. And this player is going to move to the ball. And what I really like to focus on here when we're doing the overlap isn't just, okay, he played a pass, takes two touches, slowly dribbles around this cone, comes back around, and does the next one, takes two touches, dribbles around this cone, passes back to him, gets the pass back, dribbles right here. No, what I want our players to do is explode. And I use the cone as a guide. So he plays that square ball, and we want this player to break the line and explode into space. So as soon as he takes his, uh, the ball comes to him, he's going to take a big touch all the way to the cone, but he's going to put the appropriate amount of weight on it that he's going to get there and arrive at the same time as the ball. So when it's an explosive touch, sprint out of that touch and meet the ball at the cone, and we're going to repeat that. So we play the pass. The pass is to um, uh, the appropriate foot. Maybe he's shielding, so we play to his right foot. Maybe the player is coming from the midfield that is pushing him out wide, so we play to his left foot so he can open up um, and, and put the, the other player on his hip. All right, so we can talk about that before you go into the drill. Um, you have some players can read, whatever it may be. But we're taking that pass square, and we're exploding into space. And that's simulating going back to the, um, the walkthrough we did in the beginning where the player overlapped, drove into space to create a cross to put the ball into, the, um, into an attacking area. Okay, so uh, where we go from here is I would just set them up in a game of keep away. Um, make, take what we just did and try to make it a little more um, fluid and dynamic and uh, create a point system in the keep away game. For every time you see an overlap that breaks a line, uh, you, the other opposition loses a player. The opposition has to do push-ups. Uh, you know, the opposition gets a point. Whatever game that you want to play, but get them into the uh, – they're, they're trying to force it. They're trying to force it. And then I, anytime they try to force it, even if it comes off, even if it works, even if it's like, wow, this is a great job, um, you know, it worked out, I'd still break it down and say, no, 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 listen, that, that worked out here, but here's how it's going to look. Here's why it's messy. Here's why we, we, it's not going to work in the game. Here's how it's not going to work in the situation we just talked about. Let's do that again. Uh, maybe take the point away, maybe you don't. Again, up to you. Uh, but we're trying to get them to simulate that situation as many times as possible and look for it. Look for it, and then what they'll start finding is, hey, listen, this doesn't really work. This way, I'm going to have to wait. You know, If the guy's on my hip, I need this ball to my left foot so I can put him back behind me and play this pass. Um, then also what you can do is if you feel that they're forcing it too much, you just add a, a second stipulation. If you complete five passes, you also get a point. Um, it, you know, Add another one. If you find a big switch, whatever you want to add to it. But you create something so it's like, okay, well, there's an alternate, and I'm making the right decision. Maybe it's more points if I do the overlapping run, but if I do the overlapping run, we're going to lose the ball. Um, so, again – Something simple, something, you know, very basic. Uh, all players know how to do it. You're going to quickly transition. You have to explain too much. Okay, you just you just explain them like, hey, we watched a walkthrough of it. We just did a, bit, a, a million overlaps right here. Can you do that in a game? All right, everyone knows how to play keep away. You're not going to spend time trying to explain this drill. Um, so the next one will get a little more complicated. Now we've kind of worked them in. We've seen it. We're, we're uh, satisfactory. We found that... Um, we were able to get a number of overlaps. Uh, one team maybe was a little more successful than the other, but it's fine because the other team then adapted and was got, got better throughout. All very uh, happy, great stuff. I think this one needs to be here. This one needs to be here. Now, if I put my goal here, I put a goal here. And so I'll, I don't have cones down for this, but I just want to map out kind of this area um, and what we're trying to find here. We're going to start with 2v1 over here. Black versus yellow in this grid area. And 
yellow defender. And we'll do the op uh, same thing over here. Uh, one, two, yellow. So this game, uh, you might want to have a couple guys sitting out ready to go to jump into this whenever you cha uh, change and they'll speed things up because if you kind of if you let it die, um, if you let it go and both players are attacking or whatever it is, it's going to slow it up. So I'd have a bunch of players on the on the outside here um, just ready to jump in whenever any team or one of the black players leaves their, their grid or something like that. Um, so here we're going to have 2v1s. Uh, we're breaking it down a little bit further, but then we're going to implement that uh, the concept of um, uh, the – the opposite winger uh, releasing and being available um, and have an eye out for that. Um, you can flip this one with the keep away game. If you're, you know, if you think this, you know, this is gonna be a little more, um, uh, a little more tactical. Um, maybe it's too much. You want to add them both together, but I like to break it apart with the keep away game and kind of like a, a benchmark of where I'm at, but we're breaking down key moment in the game here. And we're trying to find a two V one overlap um, in a two V one situation. We're going to have to set them up. Um, on to goal. Now you can have small goals, goal, whatever you want to do. So what we're looking to do is they should be fairly, uh, you know, for we're, we're operating at the level we need to. Maybe we add a third player if we don't operate at that level. But in a 2v1, we should be able to pretty quickly uh, create some kind of situation where we can play the, uh, the guy through. All right? Um, or, or, or on the overlap. Um, so he's on the ball. This guy bites on the ball. So I'm moving the grid. Over here. Dribbles in. Does something cool with the, uh, um, you know, a little heel flick. He does this and he breaks out of this grid. Okay. As soon as that happens, these players in this grid have an option. They can continue to play their 2v1. Maybe they break through. Okay. And one of the players, I'm just going to move this. This is annoying. One of the players is able to break through with the ball. They go for it. In this situation where they both have made it through, okay, the player that passed the ball over here, Okay, then can turn around and the defender can get on him and we can create a 2v1 to goal, which we should be creating um, as we have the um, the overlapping player going forward. This defender needs to make a decision. She go forward, she not. It helps us make that decision. And we have a 2v1 over here where this player breaks three. Uh, he goes forward. The one player that stayed in the grid now is an attacker. Okay, both shoot. One misses it, one, one misses. You have a point system in place, whatever it may be. The, all the black players get off and two new black players come on and the yellow players continue to defend. And then we switch them out eventually. Or if they're still in the grid here, okay, uh, this defend uh, this guy can immediately, before they even plays, they play this ball out, okay, to the guy out wide and immediately come in and score. All right, we find an option there and, and score quickly before the defender can even recognize it and get over there in time to cover for the, the – um, um, what would be the opposition center back or that got beat by the uh, the overlapping from breaking the line. Um, so, again, that was a little more complicated. You're going to have to work out the dynamics of it and figure out the sub plans and everything like that. But I think you're going to get high reps of 2v1 situations, recreating them over and over again and adding the element of the the opposition opposite side winger or wing back cutting in and being available in the play. What I would then do is I would cut it to a half field game uh, with breakout goals where you have um, – uh, the attacking the team that you want to be focusing on attacking this towards the goal. And now we're implementing a third idea of, okay, when do we go forward? When do we not go forward? When does an overlap work? How should I set it defensively? Because I'm going to commit numbers forward with an overlap. What happens if I get beat? And you'll see that pretty quickly because they don't have to go the entire way, but it'll show you pretty quickly. Hey, they scored in that halfway goal. They were able to switch on me because I went forward and we lost the ball and I was at a bad position. They switched over and I made a run to try to help out the nine, but, it wasn't the right idea. So we're recreating um, all those things we've been working on, um, but situationally and showing the repercussions of if we make the wrong mistake, uh, uh, the wrong choice. And then in the end, you finish it up just simply with um, working on uh, a full-sided game and seeing if those concepts come out in the, in the play. Um, so uh, again, my name is Matt Carroll with World Class Coaching um, and the Academy Sports Coach. And I'll leave in the comment section um, – uh, how to find this book, uh, Tactical Series Mauricio Pochettino. And if you'd also leave, leave a comment about some of the, the co simple coaching exercises, you know, a coach that you really love, you know, you watch in the Premier League or La Liga, and you're like, I've, I love this drill that they have, you know, this concept I constantly like to try to implement in my game. If you have something like that specifically you'd like to, to talk about in the comment section, um, definitely let us know. Uh, but that being said, I hope this session finds you well.